So if you've watched my video where I'm riding with Seth Bike Hacks, you will know that I was testing out the Karma Grip Stabilizer. As you can see here, the footage from that video is insanely smooth. So I thought I'd take this episode to try to show you how I mount the Karma Grip to get the best and most stable footage. For what it's worth, the footage you're seeing right here, I'm actually riding a hardtail mountain bike and I'm running over some pretty rough terrain, so the Karma Grip is working double time to keep the footage nice and smooth. I'll be making this video for prospective and current owners of the Karma Grip, so some of the information I'm about to share may be pretty basic. But when you get the GoPro Karma Grip, it comes with one of these adapters so you can mount it to any standard GoPro mounting system. To install it, the grip part of the gimbal comes off, allowing you to slide the adapter part on. Once installed, you want to make sure the attachment piece is in line with the controls. And then once you've done that, make sure you close the locking mechanism back down so it's not flopping around. Now that we've got the obvious things out of the way, let's talk about some of the subtle things that you might not notice that helps me get the most stable looking footage. So here, I'm using the GoPro Chesty combination with the GoPro J-Hook mounted upside down. You can most likely use a standard quick release mount. However, running the J-Mount gives you extra clearance, allowing you easier access to the buttons when it's mounted to your chest. Personally, I like to run the chest mount as tight as possible. This way, the chest mount is nice and secure to my chest, which prevents any extra movement. In my experience, these straps are prone to sliding, so I've actually locked them down in place by using zip ties. Obviously, this is far from the pretty solution to this problem, but it's cheap, simple, and super effective. Now that alone is not enough to keep the gimbal stable, so to keep it even more stable when it's mounted to my chest, I've repurposed one of the GoPro head straps. I disassembled the head strap and set everything else besides the big strap to the side. With a little finesse, you can easily unhook and hook the strap back up. Now I've also made the strap as long as possible except for leaving a little bit of a loop, which will come in handy in a second. The loop is big enough to accommodate the carbon grip, but still loose enough where I can easily slide it in and out. As you can see, the system is pretty quick and easy to set up, but this is not a system I'm going to run every single time I ride. In the near future, GoPro is supposedly releasing an extension cable that will allow you to put the grip piece in your pack or pocket, allowing you to remove some of the extra weight from your chest. But for the time being, this extra strap that goes around your back really helps stabilize the gimbal and anchor it to your chest. This way it's not bouncing up and down when you're riding down the trail. Because the camera and GoPro are kind of one and the same, I should also talk about the resolution and settings I use on my camera. Now most everything I film is filmed in a 4x3 aspect ratio. The two settings I switch between is 1440 at 60 frames per second and 2K at 30 frames per second. Filming in the 4x3 aspect ratio gives me greater freedom so I'm not worried that the camera is pointed too far up or too far down. If it is, I can correct for this while editing and still apply the super view setting in either the GoPro Studio or an equivalent effect in whatever video editing software I may be using. I didn't mention it earlier, but when recording POV footage, I always have the field of view option set to wide. Field of view also affects how stable the footage looks. A narrow field of view can make the footage look much more shaky than it actually is. And on the other hand, a wider field of view will make the footage look more stable. Now, if you want to get really nerdy, I like to keep the ProTune setting turned on. I'm largely following the guidelines that Jordan Boostmaster outlined in his video, which I'll link below. The two most important settings are Exposure Compensation, which I have set to negative 1, and the Max ISO Limit, which I have set to 400. Since I edit all my videos in post, I also have the Sharpness set to low, because I can always add sharpness later while editing. I leave white balance set to native, and I have the color setting set to flat. I would only really recommend playing with those settings if you know what you're doing. I'm using the GoPro Hero 5 Black, which has an additional microphone setting, and I have that set to stereo because the other settings really make the audio sound all weird. Another setting that the Hero 5 Black has is electronic image stabilization, which is an artificial image stabilization process that makes the video look all jello-y and gross. So if I couldn't be any more clear, I have that turned off. So hopefully this has given you all of the information you need to go out and film the most stable looking footage you possibly can with your GoPro Karma Grip Stabilizer. Now I probably did miss a few settings. If I did, leave what I missed out in the comments below. As always, my name is Phil Metz, thanks for playing bikes with me today, and I'll see you guys next time.